direct seeding of rice is not a new practice. Uh, rice is being cultivated through direct seeding in many of the East Asian countries and Vietnam is one of them. But so far as India is concerned, rice is not cultivated through direct seeded practice and it's only of recent origin basically. But it does not mean that uh, experimentation of uh, on dark seeded rice uh, was not done in the Punjab state. I talked to, uh, when we were in the process of uh, making this intervention at the farmer's field, we discussed this issue with the agronomist that why this issue was not taken up uh, during the research agenda because uh, direct seeding rice has got the potential for saving waters. The agronomist, uh, uh, they told us that uh, uh, we experimented with this practice earlier also, but the major problem in case of direct seeded rice is the incidence of weeds. The infestation of weeds is so high that it significantly reduces the productivity or yield of uh, the rice crop, so therefore it was dropped from the research agent. Secondly, because uh, 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 the water issue became relatively more important, I would say in the 90s or late 80s, for even the agronomists, they didn't think about the emerging water issues uh, uh, in the Punjab state and therefore they entirely focused on maximizing the productivity in relation to water use rather than optimizing uh, uh, productivity in relation to water use. So there, therefore it was not on their agenda. But now since water scarcity or water issues, they have become extremely important, especially the groundwater resources. Uh, and the uh, agriculture system in the, in the form of Punjab Agriculture University, it was also under continuous pressure from, uh, I would say, a considerable number of farmers who have started cultivating rice through direct seeded practices, practices and just coming up with the results that uh, it reduces water uses and uh, does not influence uh, uh, productivity in the negative sense. So therefore, uh, PAU uh, again took up the experiments of uh, dark seeded rice during last, I would say, two years. And uh, the good thing happened that uh, two VD sites, uh, they also appeared in the market which were very e effective in the control of weeds in case of direct seeded rice. Because uh, basically when we talk about the flooding of rice, basically it's done by the farmers to suppress the infestation of weeds and the crop initially for initial, the, 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 the first or beginning 20 to 25 days. So two uh, weedy sites are there now in the market which effectively control the weeds in case farmers uh, go for direct seeded rice. Therefore last year Punjab Agriculture University uh, has recommended the uh, direct seeding of rice for the farmers. Uh, but basically this recommendation is a temporary recommendation because PAU follows a very rigorous kind of procedure for the recommendation of the variety for cultivation by the farmers. Generally, it's based on two years research experimentation at the university farm and then one year experimentation at the farmer's field, which, which is known as adaptation trials. Uh, but uh, because of uh, this uh, uh, sufficient or substantial water savings in case of direct seeded rice, and uh, uh, pressure also from the farmers who are cultivating through direct seeded rice, the university gave temporary recommendation on the basis of two years trials. And that's why we were uh, also able to uh, uh, in intervene, uh, uh, to make intervention in the, in, in, in the form of direct seeded rice on the farmers' fields in our project. Otherwise, had this direct seeding, recommend, direct seeding of rice not been recommended by the university, we would not have been able to pick up this intervention for our project. Basically, because we can't go beyond the mandate of the Punjab Agriculture University since we, are, we have to adhere to the rules or regulations or practices of the uh, university. Therefore, we also took up this uh, direct seeding rice in our intervention. But, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we were already very late, frankly speaking, because uh, uh, this uh, temporary recommendation came only about 20 or um, 25 days before we started. So we had a very small time window 
uh, for going for taking up this uh, intervention in our project. Uh, therefore, we were able to uh, have this intervention only for hundred farmers this time. And, uh, the percentage germination is considered to be lower uh, in case of direct seed rise. But what happened this time? Uh, we received more than normal rainfall. And what happens when you go for direct seeding rise and you get I mean, precipitation before the seed is germinated, then a upper crest or hard crest is there on the surface of the field which does not allow the seed to germinate. Therefore, on about 30 to 35 farm situations, the seed was not germinated and therefore farmers plowed back their fields and resorted to the normal transplanted rice practice. But we have the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, how many farm situations? Yeah, there were total 87 farms, 35 plowed back okay. and 52. So now plant. we have the observations where it was successful uh, on 50, Two. 52 farm situations. So this, this year we were able to demonstrate the impact of direct seeded rice on 52 farm situation and the story is the same that we were able to save water and at the same time we did not see any negative impact on the, the seed, growth. amount of seed which is on there. To, to, to us uh, it also appears that uh, the agriculture practices for the direct seeded rice even by the Punjab Agriculture University have not been standardized to the extent these should have been. Yeah. So they are still grappling with the development of a standard package of uh, entire set of agriculture practices for direct seeded rice which does not impact negatively on their product. So that, that's also an important uh, issue. Perhaps it may take another two, three years uh, yeah, sure. uh, after which they may come up with a standard package of, uh, of uh, agricultural practices to be used for direct seed rice. So would it be correct to say that direct seeding of rice, because it's unfamiliar, requires more skill on the part of the farmer? Exactly. Uh, yeah, it, it requires relatively more expertise on the part of farmers as because tensiometer doesn't require yeah. any kind of expertise. Simply when once it's installed, simply then you have to observe the level of water in the in the tens, tensiometer tube. And then you have to I mean I mean there is otherwise there's no change in the agricultural practices for the cultivation of rice in case of tensiometer. Is there any other potential benefit of direct seeding over the tensiometer that you've observed? Any reason I why to, a, to I suggest? Uh, no, I, I don't think uh, farmers, uh, there, 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 there is a benefit of labor saving actually. That is why farmers are going for that. Exactly. Because, because when you have to transplant rice, you, you need a lot of labor. And uh, the availability of labor at that time may, be, may not be sufficient. Uh, this is the major reason w what is pushing the farmers to experiment for this direct seeding of rice. But there are problems. The major problem is this weeds, weeds uh, appearance of weeds. And uh, uh, as Dr. Sidhu said, that the cultivation practices are not standardized and they are varying a lot from the farmer from farmer to farmer. Currently, only the most innovative farmer are actually having a hands-on this direct seeding, and uh, as they're uh, thinking varies, so the, uh, this cultivation practices and there is a lot of variation across the farmers. And to to, to my mind, uh, there is more, there is possibility that in future, maybe four, five, six years, uh, uh, the direct seeding of rice may start making more sense to the farmers uh, in wake of emerging uh, uh, labor scarcity issues, because uh, when we talk about the Punjab state. Uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, migration coming from poor states of the country, especially during the transplanting of rice, uh, harvesting of rice, and harvesting of wheat seeds. Uh, for example, uh, the estimates show that uh, from the poor states like Bihar, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Odisha, uh, we used to get around 1.4 million of uh, temporary migrant laborers uh, during these seasons uh, to 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 help the farmers of the state in their operation because wage rate is much higher uh, 
uh, in the Punjab state during these two seasons, truss planting and harvesting season, as compared to the wage rate prevailing in their native states. So I mean, uh, so the, the, the influx of migrant labor has been quite high. But what happened during last two, three years, the government of India has uh, started uh, a very massive kind of program to employ to to provide employment to the to the poor sections of the society, especially the laborers, for minimum 100 days at a specified wage rate. So that's known as uh, uh, Nurega National Rural Employment Guarantee Program. And uh, this program. Uh, this uh, providing employment to the to the laborers uh, is very successful in these places, especially Bihar state and Uttar Pradesh. So, so I mean, we know that uprooting is extra, and is a very difficult uh, social kind of phenomenon that the migrant labor has to leave his families back at the native place, come to Punjab, to live in very I mean unhygienic kind of conditions, spend about two months uh, without their families. Since now they are getting employment at their own native place, almost all, may not be much higher, but relatively reasonable uh, wages, so they, their preference to come to Punjab is declining. And once that scheme becomes relatively further successful, the migration to Punjab from these states may further fall, and which may further squeeze the availability of labor for these two operations in the Punjab state. If that kind of situation emerges, probably in the next four or five years, then direct seeding rice, the situation may come that the farmers may start preferring direct seeding of rice as compared to transplanting of rice. Because during the last two years, we have seen a dramatic increase in the, in the cost of transplanting of rice, uh, and which is completely, I mean, uh, out of economic logic or economics, because uh, the, uh, because this has happened because uh, uh, one more reason is also associated with this one because now the transplanting of rice is banned before tenth of June. Earlier, simply to spread the labor availability periods, farmers used to start transplanting of rice even mid May onward, but now they cannot transplant, so they can start transplanting of rice only from 10th June onwards. And if the transplanting is done before, after 20 or 25th of June, then your productivity falls. So they have got the window of only 15 days. And 15 days window, and the rice area is 2.6 million hectares. So they have to transplant 2.6 million hectares of rice within a period of 23 weeks. So I mean, because of that very high demand for labor during that three weeks, the wage rate also should supply anything. <laughs> because the, the, I mean, the, the laborers, they also know that the farmer uh, has to perform uh, transplant ice in the field I mean, before 20th of June or at the maximum by the end of June. So that way, if the, the, the demand labor further peaks uh, in the coming three, four years because of the fall in migration, then situation may come and by that time this uh, the technology, the, the agriculture practices for direct seeded rice are also standardized. The situation may come that the farmers may start uh, preferring direct seeded rice as compared to transplanted rice. But at this moment, if you ask me between extension meters and then my, yeah. but definitely we are planning to upscale the direct seeding of rice also uh, in our project in the coming season. And our target is to take it to at least 500 farm situations uh, who opt for direct seeding of uh, rice. Uh, so that way uh, we are planning that we are not just uh, leaving this technology uh, from our project matrix. It's still very much uh, uh, in for our project matrix or for our project objectives. Because we know that it has got the potential uh, and its uh, uh, scope or importance is expected to f increase further uh, during coming around four or five or six years.